Why does China keep building aircraft carriers? Can they actually be used? Why are aircraft carriers money-eating monsters? Why is China so committed to building them? Recently, rumors and design plans for China's fifth aircraft carrier, the CV-20, have been making waves online, sparking a flurry of heated discussions. While the public's focus is on the new ship, there's a bigger question at hand. Why does China keep building aircraft carriers one after another? What strategic considerations are behind this commitment? Before we dive in, let's be clear, China isn't building carriers to compete for the coolest big toy or to pursue some kind of naval supremacy. China has always maintained a policy of supporting global technological development and advocating for world peace and security. So, why the relentless focus on aircraft carriers? Let's analyze this from a few key perspectives. What exactly is an aircraft carrier? An aircraft carrier is no ordinary vessel, simply put, it's a mobile airport at sea. However, the cost of this airport is staggering. A single U.S. Ford-class carrier costs over $13 billion to build, and that's not even counting the billions in annual operating costs. Why is it so expensive? An aircraft carrier is an incredibly complex system, packed with advanced equipment and precision instruments. From aircraft launch and recovery systems to communication and command systems, every component requires a massive investment. Moreover, a carrier never travels alone, it needs an entire escort fleet of destroyers, frigates, and submarines, which adds another huge layer of expense. In China's case, while the Fujian carrier uses conventional power, its cost is still high. The expenditure for the nuclear-powered Type 004 will be even more astronomical. Some might ask, with such a heavy price tag, why does China continue to pour money into them? The answer lies in China's evolving international situation and its own development needs. Previously, China's security concerns were primarily land-based, such as border disputes with India and instability in Central Asia. However, in the 21st century, the situation has changed. China's economy has grown rapidly, and its overseas interests have expanded, shifting its risks from land borders to maritime trade routes. South China Sea disputes, oil supply lines in the Middle East, ports invested in Africa, supply points in the Red Sea, and infrastructure projects in the Caribbean, all of these are like threads connecting China to the world, forming a lifeline that stretches for thousands of kilometers. If this line is cut, made in China products, energy, and foreign trade would all be choked. Who will protect this lifeline? The realistic answer is China must protect it itself, and that requires aircraft carriers. Was building carriers a necessary response? In 2011, during the evacuation of Chinese nationals from Libya, China realized that in a critical moment, it had to rely on its own warships to bring its people home. Later, escort missions in Somalia, the construction of the Djibouti base, and the security of port investments in Pakistan all required the presence of the Chinese fleet to protect national interests. These events made it clear that China must have a powerful naval force of its own. China's carrier development has been a step-by-step -step journey, starting with the Liaoning. The Liaoning acted as a pathfinder, helping China learn what a carrier group is all about. The Shandong followed, addressing some of the Liaoning's technical shortcomings. The Fujian represents a significant leap, moving from a ski jump launch system to electromagnetic catapults, instantly closing the gap with U.S. carrier technology. Now, with rumors of the CV-19 and CV-20 featuring larger displacement and enhanced global deployment capabilities, a clear technological progression is evident. While this may seem like an independent pursuit of advanced technology, it's actually a necessary move driven by strategic security needs. China is not seeking a winner-takes-all fight, it's afraid of falling so far behind that it can't defend itself when cornered by others. Compared to the U.S. Navy, which has dominated the world's oceans for decades, China still has a long way to go. The U.S. has 11 carriers backed by 70 years of combat experience, a global logistics network, and a complete system of command and control. China, while slowly catching up in the number of carriers, still has significant gaps in soft power. Its long-range resupply capabilities are insufficient, making it difficult to provide carriers with timely ammunition and fuel. While its land-based satellite systems are being upgraded, 
there's still a large gap in information relay coverage compared to the US's GPS and Link 16. Underwater escort capabilities are also limited, with its submarine fleet lagging behind the US's Virginia class in both numbers and stealth. It's like a fight between two people, one has a full arsenal, extensive experience, and a strong logistical support system, while the other is still gathering their weapons, lacks experience, and has shaky logistical support. The difference is stark. Therefore, China is building carriers to catch up, to narrow the gap, and to gain the ability to protect itself in a complex international environment. Do more carriers guarantee a win? Having a large number of aircraft carriers certainly looks impressive, but winning a battle is not a certainty. U.S. carrier strike groups have been honed by years of real-world combat, and their operational systems are mature. Every action, from intelligence gathering in command to troop deployment and firepower, is seamlessly coordinated. The U.S. also has numerous military bases around the world, making logistical support easy and allowing its carriers to deploy and operate globally for extended periods. In contrast, China's carrier program is relatively young, and its real-world combat experience is lacking. In long-range operations, how a carrier group coordinates with other ships, maintains communication in a complex electromagnetic environment, and effectively counters enemy submarines and aircraft are all questions that still require more practice and exercises. For example, while China is working to improve its long-range resupply capabilities, it cannot yet provide its carriers with adequate, on-demand support like the U.S. can. This limits the operational duration and range of its carrier groups in distant waters. Therefore, to truly unleash its carrier's combat power, China has a long way to go and needs to continuously improve its operational systems and combat readiness. Is China's carrier strategy the same as the U.S.'s? Some people claim that China is simply copying the U.S.'s carrier strategy, but this is a false premise. U.S. carriers are used to pick fights around the world to maintain its global hegemony. Chinese carriers, on the other hand, are meant to prevent China from being bullied and to protect its legitimate rights and interests. China has never sought to show off its might, it only wants to ensure that it has the means to defend itself when faced with a crisis. China is building a defensive long-range security circle, which is fundamentally different from the US's hegemonic mindset. China's Belt and Road Initiative, energy cooperation in Africa, poor investments in Latin America, and key interests in the Middle East, the expansion of these overseas interests requires a powerful naval force for security. Without aircraft carriers, China's overseas investments and trade would be vulnerable, like a business owner without a bodyguard who can only stand by helplessly when faced with threats. Therefore, China's development of aircraft carriers is based on its own realistic needs and is meant to allow the country to stand more steadily and go further on the world stage. Is the huge investment worth it? Every new aircraft carrier adds tens of billions to the national budget. Each carrier group requires thousands of personnel, a constant supply chain of millions of tons, and the coordination of hundreds of diplomatic, intelligence, and logistical systems for every long-range deployment. This is not just about building a big ship, it's a super project at the national strategic level. Is this investment worth it? From the perspective of the nation's overall destiny, it's absolutely worth it. China is no longer a country that simply waits at its ports for goods to come and go, it has gone out into the world, and Chinese interests are everywhere. Without a powerful force to support them, these overseas interests are like bubbles that can be popped with a single poke. Aircraft carriers are the key pillar supporting this overseas interests structure. Looking at the US, it invested heavily in its navy, especially in aircraft carriers, to build its global hegemony. Today, with its powerful navy, the U.S. controls the world's key maritime channels and has absolute say in international trade and energy transport, from which it reaps enormous profits. While China's carrier development is not for hegemony, it is similarly aimed at gaining more voice on the international economic and political stage and ensuring its own development. Therefore, in the long run, this investment is an investment in the nation's future, and it is well worth it. China's path to developing aircraft carriers is full of challenges, but its significance is immense. The era of five aircraft carriers is not the end but a new beginning.
In the future, Chinese carriers will play a greater role in safeguarding national sovereignty, security, and development interests, and in promoting the building of a community with a shared future for humanity. We look forward to seeing Chinese carriers charting even more brilliant courses on the deep blue ocean. That's all for today on the topic of China's aircraft carriers. What are your thoughts on China's carrier development? Feel free to share your comments below.